Hello friends, I am Dr. Prashant Sharma and you are watching Medico's Hub. This is my second lecture on a scalp and I am going to discuss the layers of a scalp. Now this is the section of a scalp in which we can observe this is the first layer that is skin. This one is second layer that is connective tissue. Connected tissue basically represents the superficial fascia of a scalp. Now this one is third layer which is basically represented by aponeurosis. Aponeurosis is epicranial aponeurosis which along with the occipitofrontalis muscle represents the deep fascia of a scalp. This is basically the fourth layer which is loose areolar connective tissue and this is the lowermost layer of a scalp that is pericranium. So we can remember the layers of the scalp as a scalp itself. As for skin, C for connective tissue which is superficial fascia, A for aponeurosis that is epicranial aponeurosis which along with occipitofrontalis muscle is known as deep fascia and L for loose areolar connective tissue and P for pericranium. Now, this is basically superior sagittal sinus. And these are emissary veins. These are blood vessels, hair, etc. And this is the structure of cranial bone. And this is of course the dura mater. Now, we will discuss the layers of scalp. The first layer of scalp is the skin. The skin is basically dense, thick and hairy. It is connected to the aponeurosis by connective tissue. It is connected to aponeurosis by superficial fascia or connective tissue. Now the second layer is connective tissue or superficial fascia. It is located just below skin. So its location is subcutaneous. It is dense, thick and fibrous. Plus some fatty tissues also there. So this is connective tissue. Connected tissue or superficial fascia connects the skin and the aponeurosis. Now aponeurosis. Aponeurosis is epicranial aponeurosis which is also known as gallia aponeurotica. Now this epigranial or epigranial aponeurosis or gallia aponeurotica is basically uh, located in this region and it is thicker in the central portion. It receives insertion of frontalis anteriorly and insertion of occipitalis posteriorly. Laterally, it is attached to the superior temporal line on both sides. So, Gallia polyuretica basically receives the insertion of frontalis anteriorly, insertion of occipitalis posteriorly and laterally it is connected or attached to the superior temporal lines. 
Now another part of deep fascia is occipital frontalis. So occipital frontalis is having two valleys. One is frontal valleys. Another is occipital valleys. I'll write it somewhere here. Frontal valleys, occipital valleys. So frontal valleys are basically broader, wider and little bit fused medially. While the occipital valleys are smaller and separate. Frontal valleys originate from the skin of forehead. Origin from the skin of forehead mingling with orbicularis oculi and the corrugator supercilia while the occipital valleys originate from the lateral two third of superior nuchal line. If nerve supply is concerned, nerve supply, frontal valleys receive the temporal branch of facial nerve, while the occipital valleys receive the posterior, uh, posterior auricular branch of facial nerve. So this is occipital frontalis. So occipital frontalis along with epicranial aponeurosis, these form the deep fascia of the scalp. Now the loose areolar connective tissue. Loose areolar connective tissue is basically a easy plane of separation between the upper three layers and the pericranium. Loose areolar connective tissue is connected. This is loose areolar connective tissue. It is connected anteriorly with the in the skin of eyelids. Now, it's very important that because frontalis muscle is not having any bony adherent, so a skin and a skin of eyelids, the connection of loose areolar connective tissue gives a support. Posteriorly, it is connected with superior nucleolines and highest nuchal lines. Laterally, it is connected to superior temporal lines. So this is loose areolar connective tissue and the last one is pericranium. We observe this, this is pericranium and this is the cranial bone. So pericranium is basically loosely adhered with the underlying cranial bone but it's important that it is having firm adherence at the sutures with the help of sutural ligaments. So this is pericranium and it is having the blood supply and it is having the osteoblast. So it also gives a chance of regeneration or repair there. 
so these are the five layers of scalp first is skin another is connective tissue that represents the superficial fascia third one is aponeurosis epicranial aponeurosis along with occipital frontalis muscle is known as deep fascia then loose areolar connective tissue followed by pericranium at the lower side so this is the scalp so hit the like button share and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications